if your auntie, your uncle, or your mother, or your father tell us their life nice or fine, I lie to them and tell me we tell the truth. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. This video, you know, I'm gonna spill my gut. This is going to be a tell all. I'm going to tell you where your auntie and your cousin and your mother and your father for now I tell you. Right? So this is going to be a video about my, me migrating from Jamaica to the UK. What it's like migrating. Do I regret it? What it's like living here in the UK? If this is something that you're interested in hearing about, then go ahead and continue watching this video. But wait, if you do click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, then don't bother watch it. But if you have already done all that, then let's get straight into the video. So yeah, in our video today, I have my Bailey's rum cream, and my giant glass. So I'm going to drink and talk, and we're going to just have a little chat, you know? Start off small. Yeah, so basically, I moved from Jamaica to come here to the UK almost four years ago. I left Jamaica when I was 19 years old, and yeah, now I'm living in the UK. I came here to join my mother, who has been here for what a time, almost all of my life. <laughs> well, almost. So yeah. Um, it's been a long process. If you have tried to apply for a UK visa, you know as well. Say, so, what if a time you try, you try, you try, you try, you try, and you get you. Because at the end of the day, everything is a money making thing. So I think it was like maybe four applications before I finally got through to come here. And by that time, I was already 19. Based on my experience, or in my opinion, I would say that the younger you actually, if you're migrating, the younger you actually migrate, it's the better. But when you get to an age where, you know, you're older, you're an adult now, it's completely harder to readjust to the migration. Because, you know, when you're kids, you like new experiences, you want to try new things, everybody want to go foreign, whatever, whatever, you want to go on plane. But when you're an adult now, then more things come into perspective, like, you know, your goals, your career, your house, you know what also you want to buy your future partner marriage kids all those things come into perspective when you're an adult while when you're a child you don't really care much about that so like if you're a parent and you're thinking of you know probably filing for your children or migrating with your children then i would say the quicker the better but yeah so i made a few notes on my phone <coughs> So I don't miss out anything that I actually want to talk about. So yeah. First thing I would say, moving here to the UK, um, the first thing you'd actually have to get used to is obviously the weather. Like moving from nice, nice tropical Jamaica with sun ever at like a day of hell to come in the UK where this minute it's cold next minute it's freezing next minute you're dead that is just it it is so cold here especially like you know during the winter months in summer not too bad but trust me the hottest days here is a very cold day in jamaica like literally i see like you see if it's like 18 degrees over here people rejoice and people go on a beach and people go on wherever it's completely different in terms of the weather and it's definitely a big 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 readjustment and of course with weather is also the clothing so you know me if you know me i'm gonna really wear clothes so when i had to come and then have on a uh, three layer clothing because sometimes in the winter i have a uh, negative two degrees weather like freaking snow all of them something there you know if you have on three layer clothing all of them things there eh? if you have on thermal tights and and and, and blows underneath if you have on gloves if you have on scarf if you have on hat what if something right so i think that would be the obvious thing to consider like what it's like when you're migrating the weather one more sip 
Mm. So of course that is nothing big compared to all other things that you have to readjust to. So you know I'm starting off small. So the next thing as well I found with my readjustment like when I was in Jamaica obviously because I left when I was 19 like partying and socializing and stuff you know I was just getting to that stage where I was going to parties a lot and all of them something there so you know, I was just getting into the nice life but over here now in the UK while Over here now in the UK, while they are a lot, there are a lot of Jamaican parties and there are a lot of clubs and all that where you can find a lot of Jamaican people, the scenery is like completely different and you don't see a lot of young people as well because the parties that I go to which are like strictly dancehall parties, those parties they're going to be older people. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, those parties are going to like be older people like 30s and up going to those parties and my young young 23 year old but I didn't party them me like because it reminds me the most of Jamaica um I struggle to find people that like young people over here that much that actually you know fresh from Jamaica most young people that you'll see that say they're Jamaican is really just them parents are Jamaican or them probably you yeah, have a slight chance they might meet somebody that was born in Jamaica but lives here all their life. So yeah, they will be in more the British scenery. Yes, they won't have the same type of vibes and the same type of partying that we had while we were in Jamaica. So that is one thing that I see is like a big difference. The next topic is the topic of racism so that is like such a scary topic for most people that is such an uncomfortable topic for some people but no matter how you feel about it the fact is that it does exist and it is not within our control unfortunately so of course growing up Jamaica growing up in Jamaica you would not have any experience with racism because at our place and I be black people that here so who are gonna be racist towards you or who you are gonna be racist towards but coming to the UK you now is like a complete different thing um, in most cases um, well based on my experience I do not face like direct racism but I do know that there are lots of cases where the racism can be like you know hidden or indirect or certain type of um, remarks that are passed yeah like certain types of remarks that are passed or the way in which you are treated sometimes will allow you to feel like there's evidence of racism within it however in most cases it's not that upfront it's not that outright but you know being in a um white dominated country a country owned by white people it's 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 just obvious that that's going to be something that comes along um especially when first of all when you meet people the first question that they ask you if they ask you your name first that's good but if their name is the first question the second question is going to be where are you from and they don't mean like where you live in the UK, they mean where you originate from. And even if you're born in the UK, them still want to know your background, like where your people them come from. Because once you're black, they know not to expect to say you're British. Because even when, you know, you're filling out your forms and stuff, you'd say, you know, black British, or uh, Car Caribbean British, African British, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, my point is, um, it might be a case where as because it's a white country um anybody that's black may be seen as like somebody that is not originated that has not originated from here is that correct grandma whatever that did not originate from here um and that does not completely belong here right um personally based on my experience i've never had any like all right experience with racism which I am grateful for but I've heard a lot of stories and I've seen a lot of situations in which um, it may seem that a person's complexion might influence that um, I remember for example I was working my very first job when I came here to the UK um, 
in 2018 I was working in a store and then um, I noticed that whenever I'm on the shop floor you would have the supervisors that are there you know obviously supervising but one thing I always noticed is that whenever a group of black guys came into the store that's when they would be on high alert and that's when they would you know probably I'll go on the the what you call it like it's a walkie talkie they call it radio over here they would go on the radio and they'll be like oh um like they're trying to say I remember I think there was like a code for it or something but basically they're trying to say shoplifting you know be on the lookout for shoplifters because a group of black guys came in but then if a group of white guys came in it wouldn't really be an issue so that's something that I've seen happen a couple of times whereas I feel like because they're black um, automatically these white supervisors feel as though some form of, you know, criminal activity is about to take place, some form of shoplifting, some form of stealing, whatever, is about to take place. So that kind of, you know, like rubbed me the wrong way, that kind of made me feel some type of way. And I knew within myself that that was, you know, like some form of racism or, you know, stereotype or whatever involved in that. So my biggest issue, if I'm being honest, um, in terms of my whole transition here is the idea of housing. I'm a person that I love my own space, right? When I was in Jamaica, I was living by myself from I was 18 years old. Um, clearly never had that much time living by myself. Just a bit over a year, I lived by myself and then I moved here. So since I've moved here, I've been living with my mom because, you know, well, first of all, when you just come here, nobody never really expect you to go on your own right away. But even if you want to go on your own, boy, it's a hard. Because housing over here is like completely different from housing in Jamaica. I can't talk for America because I don't know anything about America. I can't talk for Canada. I can't talk for anywhere else. But UK in specific, housing here is the worst, right? And that's why you'll find in most cases that a lot of Jamaicans, and not even Jamaicans, a lot of people in general in the UK would rely on government housing um, and benefits. So housing benefits and council housing. So basically council housing is like, it's houses owned by the council or the government that um, enables you to rent it at a cheaper price or in some cases if you're receiving financial um, assistance from the government you may not have to pay rent they'll probably be paying your rent for you which is of course a complete benefit or uh, not benefit yeah which is of course a complete pro um on the side of the uk because you know in jamaica you're not getting nothing free so yeah definitely i think that that is a great thing about this country um the fact that they have that type of system in place in order to help people however this type of benefit is not accessible is not very accessible housing benefit is very difficult to be on um, and it definitely rely depends on your circumstance or your situation but you see anybody that is not getting housing benefit boy that is hard because housing here is so expensive like literally a house renting or say you're renting even a one bedroom the cheapest you get a one bedroom flat for or house for meaning for yourself is like maybe a thousand pounds thousand two hundred pounds depending on where you are obviously but i'm in london where everything is more expensive so two bedroom flats you're looking at thirteen hundred pounds probably going all the way up to two thousand pound depending on the location and the type of um housing house whatever right so housing is very expensive because most people literally make just over a thousand pound a month or even less than a thousand pound a month like the average person that works in the uk will probably be earning like 10 pound an hour to 15 pound an hour if they're lucky 15 pound an hour is a great wage right so if you're taking home little over a thousand pound after taxes imagine having to pay a rent for one thousand rent for one thousand two hundred pounds and then separate from the rent you have the light bill the water bill um the gas bill you have counter tax you have one bag of payment 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 it's just impossible 
and that's why you find that in the UK most people actually just rent rooms instead of a complete house which I've never known about until I came to the UK because obviously in Jamaica if you are rent a house you are rent a house or you live in a tenement yard or you live with your family them right but over here you have complete strangers renting a room within a house that they're sharing with other strangers like I never knew that was a thing until I came to the UK like that is how difficult it is living in the UK in terms of housing that you actually have to spend your money rent a single room in a house and then share bathroom and share kitchen with other people yeah and then the cost for like a room would be like maybe 500 pounds if you're looking for a double room Single room, you know them single, you know a single bed or single bed small, so you know single room I got one tiny little matches box something. And then that now probably like 350, 400 if I'm not wrong. And then double room can be anywhere between 500 pounds and 650 these days. So I could do some little calculation, right? So say you have a 9 to 5 that pays 10 pound an hour, which is like I think the average pay for nine to fives here probably or less for some people so 10 times should it be eight hours i don't even think you get paid for your lunch time do you well let's say 10 times eight so that'll be 80 pound a day right and then five times 80 is 400 so that'll be 400 for the week 400 times money you know i did need the calculator because my sparks so you know 400 times four that's 1600 but that would be your pay, your salary before tax. After tax come out right now, I'm not even know. You're probably going with a what one thousand or less. Somebody that know about UK tax, let me know in the comment section because I really don't know. But I know that the tax is a whole heap of money. Like whole heap of money. So yeah, you're going home with say a thousand pounds a month. I might want to put it so low. One thousand two hundred pound a month. Let's say a four hundred dollars only a pay in a tax. Even though I really doubt it's that low, but let's say a four hundred pound a pay in a tax, right? And you're going with one thousand two hundred a month. Then you have to rent. More than likely, you're going to rent a room because you can't afford a full house when a full house is one thousand two hundred. That's all your pay. So you rent a room for six hundred pound, and then you probably have six hundred leave back, and then that is what you live on for the month. So that's basically what most people in the UK survive off and that's what that's why you'll find that most people move from Jamaica, come here and them life do better than when they were in Jamaica or do better than people that are currently in Jamaica. So sometimes it's really pointless. Things over here are very expensive. For example, even the mere parking like I drive and each and every day I just feel so angry about the whole system over here. You know in Jamaica you just take care of your pocket anywhere you go about your business and you're good. Over here so now, every freaking way you go, paid parking, paid parking, paid parking. Right now I park out of my yard front. I'm afraid I get ticket because the space them did full up and then I have to park but I look at yellow line on my seat. I'm afraid I get ticket because a couple of times when I get ticket out there. But what can I do? At hours of the night, 12 o'clock at night, I reach home, everybody already come home and occupy all of the parking space them. You can't find anywhere for park. And, unfortunately, in the UK, you have ticket man go around 24 7 a ticket take care because you don't park properly. Tell me now. I'm not have nothing better for do. And then, tickets over here, so now, you yeah, get us ticket for like 60 pound if you're paying a 14 days if you're not paying a 14 days you're going up to 100 pound 130 pound 150 pound so much man like same thing man i thought about so i'm gonna come i'm gonna car one ticket right on the windscreen stress out may i move back to me it all depends on your mindset because if you have the right mindset and the right type of amb ambition no matter where you are in the world, you will be successful. You will achieve your goals. You will do what you need to do in order to get where you need to get. But if you don't have the right mindset, no matter where you go, you're still going to have the same outcome, right? So, to me, I don't think that migrating is for everybody. I'm going to feel like there's something where you have to jump and do. You know? If you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just 
how I feel in it as it relates to the migration, especially from Jamaica. Because I know me always and forever love Jamaica. And trust me, like, me always have, you know, I compare my situation here and my experiences here. But it just look big. But as I compare my situation and my experiences here with those, um, you know, when I, that I have in Jamaica. And I don't care how poor Jamaica is. I don't care how dirty it is. I don't care what. Me, I, I always prefer Jamaica. Best believe it. And another thing as well, like, everybody in Jamaica will feel like, say, foreign is a bed of roses. People are foreign rich. That is just not the case. Right now, I see more homeless people in England more than I see in Jamaica. And that is no cap. Like, they are serious. There are more homeless people there, there here. And crackheads, crooked. Like, I can't even know. Right? So, it's not... I don't feel like it's a bed of roses. I don't feel like it's an upgrade. I don't feel like nothing. It's simply just mere opportunity. If you want to look at it like that. Because, obviously, I have exposure to stronger currency but at the same time